So hello all, myself Kumar Ankit present over here to share some of my learning experience on the completion of the second task for the graduate rotation internship program for the Sparks Foundation. So the second task is to predict using unsupervised ML and the goal is to predict and the goal was that from the given Irish data set we have to predict the optimal number of clusters and represent it visually. So here I have used the k-means clustering. So before I show what I have done, so let's first quickly recall what is k-means clustering. So k-means clustering is a simple unsupervised learning algorithm that is used to solve the clustering problems. It follows a simple procedure of, class of classifying a given data set into a number of cluster defined into the letter k and k here means the number of cluster which is fixed and the cluster are then positioned and the cluster are then positioned as the point in all the observation for the data set for the data point are associated with the nearest cluster that is computed and adjusted and then process starts over using the new adjustment until the desired the desired result is achieved so after getting a gist of what is the key means clustering so now let's get started and let's just see what is the process of uh, the process of predicting the optimal number of clusters using key means so here is my github link that uh, anyone can visit this link and see the code over on, on the github so let's get started so we have just i have just divided into the five step that is we will follow the first the first five step each and so the first step is to inputting all the necessary libraries so here i have inputted a pandas numpy matplotlib seaborn os and warnings as a current version of Seaborn generated a bunch of warnings so we will ignore that quite few warnings so for ignoring that i have just imported warning and then i have just used the filter warning for ignoring so after importing data set the second step is to just read a data set into our jupyter notebook so for reading a, a data set into jupyter notebook i have used a panda function that it is a standard process to use a panda function because panda function pandas is used for data handling so I have here here I have used pd rotary underscore csv and then I have provided my file path and then the file name and then I have just written a print statement that is my data is imported successfully. So here it is giving my media output as data is imported successfully. So after importing a data set I will just assign a name to my data set that is iris. So here we have an iris data set that we are using. So here I have assigned a name that is iris and then just copied the code that I had that above that I have used for reading a data set so here we are quite good to go so again in the third step what we are doing we are doing some ADA on top of the iris data set that is we are checking our head as default head gives the top five rows to top, top five rows of my data set and then we are checking our tail that what are that what is the last five values for my data set and then after checking the head and tail we are just sharing the info as info gives the information about my data set that what are all the columns associated to my data set whether it has any null value or not what is the total count of the values associated with each column and what is the data and what is the data type for it so here we are getting the columns as id sepal and sepal with petal length petal width and species all the values are 150 for each and uh, the count is non non null because we don't have a null value and the data type is given as in, in 64 flow 64 for all and the species have object so after getting the information about my data set i am just checking the shape the iris dot shape and this will give me in the form output in the form of rows and columns here we have 150 rows and six columns and then we are checking iris dot size it will give me a size of my data set that i have a size of 900 and then similarly i am checking the iris dot columns iris dot column will give all the columns that i have in my data set so it is giving me id sepal and sepal with petal length petal width and species and the data type is also being mentioned that is object for it so after checking information shape size and then i am checking what is my data type for my columns that i have in my data set so here we can see the id has in 64 sepal length has flow 64 sepal width has flow 64 and species has object so after checking my columns i am checking the values what are my values associated to all the columns that i have 
so here it is giving me the output in the form of an array which has a value of 1.1, and it is array set of them. So after every 150 values, there will be an array multi color. So here we can see there is a 5.1, 7 .7, 4 .7, 4 .7 and 1.4, and it is iris multi color. So after 150 values, we will have a iris virginica so in species column we have three unique values that is iris atosa verticular and virginica so here we can see um, that the value is 100 5.7 2.8 4.3 1.3 and it is iris verticular so after checking the shape size information data type columns value i am checking the describe function describe function gives us the statistical measure that is present all for all the numerical column that is present in our data set so it will give me the count mean standard deviation minimum and then the interquartile range that is 25 percentile 50 percentile 75 percentile and the maximum value for it so after checking this describe function i am just checking what are my null values for it and doing the sum for it particularly so i am just giving the code as iris dot iris dot is null and then doing the sum so it will give me all the values that i have associated with any null value that is there is or not so particularly we have all the columns that we have available and we are all with the null value so here is all the all the values is in zero so we don't have any null values in it so we are good to go further we don't need to check any null value because we don't have it so after doing this the fourth step is to for the data visualization so we need to visualize our data in order to see how my data is responding towards other other what other co other column or other variable that we have in our data set so here i am plotting my sepal length uh, for a histogram plot and then we are seeing that we are able to see that it has a value in x in x it has a value of 4.9 to ranges from 8.0 and in y axis it is it has a value of 0.25 and then similarly i am plotting for the sepal sepal width so here we have we can see that here, here it has a quite normal distribution so if if i can tell you that in x axis we have a value ranges from 2.0 to 4.5 and in y axis it the value ranges from 0 to 35 and we have a quite normal distribution that is being shown, shown over here so after checking sepal length and sepal width i am just plotting it for the petal length and petal width as well so here it is so we can see that in petal length we have a two class that is one class is being separated from the other two classes so here we can in the next plotting we can see that what what are these two classes that is being separated from each other and then similarly plotting for the petal width as well so for the petal width here we can also see that it has a one class that is being separated from the other two classes slightly being joined in the middle so the in next axis we can see the value is from 0. Point, from 0. 0.0 to 2.5 and in y axis we have a value ranges from 0. 0.40 so here we can see the value of for the one class is around 43 and the value for other two classes is being marginally being in 35 and so on so here what we are doing in the next code in the next code we are just giving the color to every species that we have and, and in species we have a three unique value that is iris at also virginic and versicolor so now we will see that what are what are my these three species that is being separated from each other classes so for that i have just used a for loop so written a code for it and i have just given a plt dot scatter because i want a scatter plot for that and mentioned my x as sepal length and y as sepal width and then i have mentioned my color and the label as species that i have mentioned in the previous code so after plotting we can see that the red the red color is iris atosa and the blue color is iris versicolor and yellow is iris virginica so here we can now clearly see that iris atosa is being separated from the other two classes that is iris virginica and versicolor so similarly for the next i can plot the sepal the petal length and petal width as i have plotted earlier the sepal length and sepal width now i will plot the petal length and petal width so for the petal length and petal width as well i i have used a similar code just i have changed the here i have changed the x and y values for my, my scatter plot that is uh, previously i have used the sepal length and sepal width in my x and y and now i am using my petal length for x and petal width for my y 
so here we can say in the output that iris setosa is being quite marginally being differentiated from the other two classes that is iris versicolor and versinica is being combined with uh, combined in one class and iris setosa is being differentiated in the other class which have a small amount of values present in it so similarly in the next code i can plot for the sepal length and petal petal width and the petal length as well so again i have used the same code just i have changed my x and y values and rest all are same and here i have provided a plt dot legend plt dot legend shows all the columns uh, that uh, all the variable that is being plotted for the different colors so here we can see again the iris atosa is being differentiated from the other two uh, the other two species that is iris virginica and versicolor and here we can see we have a quite uh, small values of iris versicolor that is in blue color and uh, here i can see there is only one value of iris virgin uh, iris virginica that is being differentiated from the other, the other two species and we have a quite low value over here and we have then combined value over here so after plotting all this having a data visualization now what what was our final goal our final goal was to just how how we can define our optimal number of cluster of for the k means and we have to determine for the value of k then what is the value of k and how we will define the value of k so here in k means clustering the value of k is defined by the elbow method so what is elbow method we will see how to plot the elbow method and how to find the number of cluster for the k so elbow method is the best way to find the number of clusters for the k so here k means the number of clusters so we will find how to plot how to find the number of the elbow method and how to plot it for that similarly so here what we are doing we are just defining our x uh, x as uh, iris and it will search and, gi and given the i index location and then i have used 0 1 2 3 for the species value and then i have used from the sklearn dot cluster but that i will import k means and wcs is nothing but nothing but the uh, wcs is the within sum of clusters yeah wcs then wcs is, is the within within cluster sum of squares so here i have used the for loop in 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 this code i have just used the in for loop and i have used the range that is between 1 and 11 and then i have defined the k means and then i have given the parameters and as n cluster is equal to y and n it equal to k min plus plus and the maximum iteration that i want is 300 and the and it function i have defined the 10 and random set I have used in 0 so here I will fit my x and then I will usually append this k in inertia so after doing all this then I have plotted my figure size and we, I have to plot a so then I have to plot a line graph so for plotting a line graph I have defined my figure size I have defined my plot that will be ranges from 1 to 11 and uh, that is for WCSS that is within cluster sum of squares and then I have used my plt dot title that title would be the elbow method and then I have used my plt dot x label that is the number of clusters and then I have used plt dot y as wcss that is <coughs> within cluster sum of squares and then with the function of wplt dot show I will plot my line graph for that so here we can see that it is an elbow method so elbow method is what uh, the number of key is defined when the when the line is being bent when the line is being bent over that that the maximum iteration will not change over the maximum iteration so it will define our k so here we will so here our k is 3 so we can clearly see that why it is called the elbow method so from the above graph the optimal number of pressure is where the elbow the elbow occurs what is the elbow that it that it is it has a bend over that so this is when the this is when when the within cluster sum of squares doesn't decreases significantly over over each iteration. So here we have defined our k equal to three as it is being bending towards the value of two and four between the value of two and four that it in, that will be three. So <coughs> for that now I am applying my k means to my data set and creating a k means classifier 
so for creating a k-means classifier here i have used a k-means and then i have created a classifier as k-means and then just i have provided the parameter as and cluster equal to 3 because I have find my that is the cluster that is 3 and I have provided my unit equal to k min plus plus and then the maximum iteration I have provided 300 and unit I have provided 10 and then in the random state I have provided 0 so here after giving all the parameters I will just I will just now predict the value of x so here I have used k means and then I will give the k means dot fit and predict the value of x sorry so here after after running this now what i will do i will just visualize my cluster on the first two columns that i have so for doing that i will just give my plt dot figure size as 10 comma 8 and then i will give my scatter plot and then i will provide a parameter as y k means equal to 0 0 and then x y means equal to 0 comma 1 and here i have used as equal to 100 and the color I have used that is red and the label I have used for the iris atosa so iris atosa will having will have a red color and then similarly I used for plt dot scatter and then I have used for uh, the iris the species that is for iris versi color and the color here I have used that is c equal to blue and then similarly for the last species I have used color equal to green and then I have provided the label equal to iris virginica so after providing all this color to each species now i will plot my centroids for the cluster so provide so plotting the centroids for the cluster i have just we will have to use a plt dot scatter function and then we will provide in the inside the parenthesis that is k means cluster center that is i will use from starting to zero and then i have provided the k means cluster center that is starting from zero till one and then i have used a color equal to yellow that will be for the centroid and then I have used the labels equal to centroid. So here I am plotting for the centroid. So I have plotted for, I have given my uh, parameters for the each species. Now I am giving my parameters for the centroid positions. So after running this, it will give me the output like this that we have all the species plotted. So here we can see the iris atosa is in red color, iris, iris versi color is in blue, iris virginica is in green, and the centroid is being plotted with a yellow color. So here in x-axis we can say the value is, is between the 0 to 140 and in y-axis the value is from 4.5 to 8.0. So for this every species is being plotted with a, with a different color that a blue is for the iris versi color, green is for the iris virgin and red is for the iris satosa. So for every cluster we have assigned a centroid that is in the middle positions. Here we can see that initially the centroid is being assigned at a random position in starting the centroid is being assigned at a random position but what we do by finding the el by using the elbow method by by find by using the elbow method we find that number of k that is the number of clusters that we have and on basis of that we minim we find the distance and by minimizing the distance at every iterations we find the uh, we find the centroid position at every minimum position that we have so after finding this the centroid position is being reallocated to its middle so we can see that every centroid position for the every cluster is in the middle positions for the for iris versicolor we have the centroid position in middle for iris virginica we have centroid position in middle and for similarly for iris satosa the centroid position is in middle so whatever our goal was that we have to predict the centroid positions so I can see here it was here it is our goal that we have to find the optimal number of clusters for the k-min and we have to determine the value of k. So we are quite good. We have done it. So it's all for today. Have a good day and be safe and be at home. Thank you and have a nice good night.